This is a diagram used by astronomers to learn a lot about stars. What we do is we take stars and measure how bright they are, their magnitude, and we measure their temperature. And then what we do is we put the stars on a diagram that looks something like this. Um, actually, let me fix it up a bit here. Um, I want to plot some stars here. So here's some stars plotted on a diagram, and this bottom axis is temperature. And oddly enough, the temperature gets larger as you go more to the left. So that's not like what you would sort of expect, but notice 4,000 degrees Kelvin, which is, well, for our purposes, it's pretty much like Celsius and Fahrenheit. Let's just say really, really hot is towards the left. And hot, but for a star on the cooler side, is on the right. So temperature increases to the left. Brightness increases going up the diagram as well. And um, we can see that. Uh, I thought there was a way to plot this. Okay, um, with magnitude. So remember, magnitude gets brighter the more negative it is. So what this diagram shows us is that stars on the lower right are, let's see, they're to the right, so they're cooler, and they're low, so they're dim. It's not surprising that something that's cool is dim. As the stars get hotter and move to the left, well, they get brighter. And so that's sort of a logical thing you would expect. And that's true for most stars. 90% of stars spend their 90, like 90% 90 of their lifetime on this main sequence. It's called a main sequence of stars. This is not a map of what you would see if you looked into the sky. Okay, so this is not a picture of the Milky Way galaxy or anything. You will not see star constellations. These are not constellations like this. This is measuring just the brightness of a star, the vertical axis, and the temperature, and then plotting it on a diagram, like a math graph. So our sun is a main sequence yellow star right in here, and um, it will live its life, and then eventually it will be go into a phase where it would be up in this region of the diagram. So as our sun itself gets cooler, Here's on the left, it's getting cooler, I hope. Um, towards the end of its life, it will enter a phase where it gets brighter, yet cool. And so here, if you've noticed, it's moved out over into this section. This is where the red giants live. And this is the red giant section here. When our sun goes um, past the red giant phase, the outer areas of it will just kind of slough off and go into space and become matter for the next nebula that start that forms a star or a planetary system. But the center of it will just be uh, remaining. It'll be remaining and it'll be still pretty hot. Um, and now the center of it would be hot, so it would be towards the left, but the center of our sun, once it's all done burning its fuel, it's not going to have any fuel really, it's going to be small, so because it's small, but still pretty hot, it's called a white dwarf. It glows. Um, it's not too bright relatively to a burning star, a star that's actually fusing hydrogen and hydrogen into helium, but the core will be still luminous enough to be a little bit bright there, so it's called a white dwarf. So these are the phases of, they're actually called luminosity classes, of stars. Everything on this band is called a main sequence. The uh, blue supergiants are up here. These are massive stars, stars that just started out with a whole lot of mass. And so they're very bright, like this one on the left, very bright and very, very hot. So here they would be blue supergiant, very bright and very hot. If you look at this sun compared to our star, our sun, if, sorry, if you look at this star compared to our sun. Um, now let's dim this down. If you dim down the luminosity, it goes down into the white dwarf area. If you lower the temperature, then it, you get what we expect. Something that is low temperature is not going to be very bright. So this is just an overview of something called the HR diagram, and it's in your textbook in chapter 15, well worth studying and pondering. There's a lot to learn here. Thanks for listening.